Hey everybody, it's time for the weekly night night story and I am on the go tonight. So I am going to read from a little bit different location. Well, a very different location actually. Um, it's been a long day, so bear with me. But I've got a special story tonight. One that I actually um, have not read before. So I'm excited it's going to be new for you and for me. Um, I would like to thank my friend Jaden for letting me borrow this book. I have been asking for help with a good variety of books for Night Night Storytime into the summer. And I definitely will continue the weekly story time this summer. I don't know about fall yet if I'll do it every week or just do pop-up, but this has become a favorite thing um, for me to do during the week, and I am so glad that you have welcomed me into your homes, um, whether you are little bitty or, you know, whether you are a parent, a grandparent, um, whatever age. So the book that we're going to read tonight is called Rainbow Fish and the Big, Big Blue Whale. <laughs> that's a tough one, but that's what it looks like. And it was written by Marcus Pfister. So I know a lot of y'all probably have read the Rainbow Fish before. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I think it's really cute. There's the first picture right off the bat with that little bitty rainbow fish and the whale looking at the little rainbow fish. Okay. So I'm going to try to read it and um, show you the pictures at the same time. A long way out in the deep blue sea, rainbow fish and his friends swam happily through the reef. Each of them had a glittering silver scale, except for one little striped fish, but he belonged to the group anyway. And you can see the little silver parts. When the fish were hungry, they ate tiny krill. There seemed to be endless supplies of the delicious shrimp. Rainbow Fish only needed to glide gently through the water with his mouth open to catch as many as he wanted. It was a wonderful life. One day, a gentle old whale swam by the reef and decided to stay. He liked the spot since he too ate the krill that were so plentiful there, and he enjoyed being around the glittering fish. Often, he drifted along, watching them for hours, admiring their beautiful silvery scales. Before long, the fish with the jagged fins noticed the whale watching them. Why is he looking at us like that? He asked the others. He was in a particularly bad mood that day. See how he's staring at us? He went on irritably. Who knows what he's thinking? After that, all the fish grew more and more suspicious of the whale. Look at that giant mouth, said one. Soon, the krill will all be gone. Rainbow fish began to worry. Up until now, the fish had always been able to eat their fill. What if the whale did eat up all the krill? And why did he keep staring at them? Was he planning to eat them too? One day, the whale swam quite near the school of glittering fish. Panicked, the fish with the jagged fins sounded the alarm. Look out, he called. The wicked whale is after us. When the whale heard that, he was hurt at first, but soon he grew very angry. I'll show them, he thought. I'll teach them a lesson. So the great blue whale shot into the middle of the school and lashed out with his gigantic tail, 
sweeping the sparkling fish in all directions. Look at them tumbling over. The terrified fish fled, racing towards a crack in the reef for safety. But the whale didn't leave them alone. He followed Rainbow Fish and his friends all the way back to their cave. The blue whale swam back and forth, casting sinister glances at the little fish. Do you know what sinister means? Sinister means something dark, something scary. They were trapped. You can see that they're trapped in that crack in the reef. I told you that whale was dangerous, whispered the fish with the jagged fins. We have to watch out for him. After a while, the whale calmed down. He made one last pass, then disappeared behind the reef. Nervous, but driven by hunger, the fish continuously and cautiously left their cave and swam off in search of food. But the battle with the whale had left its mark. All the krill had been driven off. This is silly, declared Rainbow Fish. Before, we played happily in the sea. Now, we hide in terror in our cave. Before, there was always enough food for everyone. Now we have nothing. We must make peace with the whale. The other fish were all too afraid to approach the whale. It was up to Rainbow Fish. The whale stared at Rainbow Fish suspiciously. Please, let's talk, said Rainbow Fish. This fight was all a big mistake. It drove off the krill and now we're all hungry. The two talked for a long time. The whale told Rainbow Fish how hurt and angry their hostile words had made him. I never meant to harm you, said the whale. Just scare you a little. Rainbow Fish was ashamed. I'm sorry, he said, but when we saw you watching us all the time, we were afraid you might eat us. The whale looked surprised. I watched you only because your shining scales are so pretty, he said. They both laughed. Come on, come on now, said the whale. Let's find new hunting grounds. So Rainbow Fish and his friends, protected by their new friend, the Big Blue Whale, swam off together in search of a new home, rich with krill. And before long, none of them could remember what the terrible fight had been about. And that's the end of Rainbow Fish and the Big Blue Whale. Now, Every week, <clears throat> um, before we have a night-night prayer, I like to talk about what lessons the story reminds me of. And this week, there are lots that come to my mind. One of the words for a lesson might be a takeaway, something that you're going to remember um, that the story teaches you. And so... One of the things that this book is reminding me about is that we need to be careful how we judge other people just based on their appearances. Um, we all are different. We all look different. We all have different skin tones. We have different types of hair. We have different body shapes. Um, some of us are short. Some of us are tall. Some of us somewhere in between. But we all are different. Some of us can walk well. Some of us cannot walk at all. And we have to have assistance. Maybe even a wheelchair. But we're all special. We all have things that make us glitter. Just like um, the little fish. And if you noticed something else... The striped fish fit in too, even though he didn't glitter, but he was still welcome in that group. He was still part of the group. He was still part of um, 
the fish that hung out with the blue whale. So I hope that you would think about <clears throat> the importance of not jumping to conclusions about others just based on the first thing that you might see. Um, get to know people and get to know their stories. And then probably what you're going to find, much like with the blue whale and the glittering fish and the little striped fish, is that um, we all have a lot more similarities than differences. And we need to celebrate um, celebrate the things that make us different and acknowledge them. And there's nothing wrong with that too, but we also need to find common ground and we need to think about, you know, the fact that we all want to have a good life. The fact, just like with the fish and the blue whale, um, we have to eat, we have to sleep. Um, you might have heard somebody say that we all get up the same every day and we all, you know, put on our pants the same way. I don't know if that's true, but I just hope that we can spread some patience and some kindness and some understanding, um, even with people who are different from us, so that we can, we can show each of God's children that they are special and that they are loved. And we can accomplish so much more when we just communicate and we talk and we listen. So I think another good lesson is when the little fish, um, the little rainbow fish was smart enough and mature enough to approach the big blue whale and have a talk. Because a lot of times you might have a misunderstanding that can be worked out pretty easily. And they had a misunderstanding, but they wouldn't have known about that if they hadn't talked about it. So, communicate, talk, and listen. Be willing to listen, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and have our prayer. And again, this will be posted on Facebook and YouTube. If you came on and it was late and you didn't catch the whole story, um, you can catch it later. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we know that we're not perfect. We know we all have differences. We look differently. Some of us are bigger than others. Some of us are tiny. Some of us are really short. Some of us are tall. We know we have different colorations. We know we have different types of hair. We have different personalities. Sometimes we might talk differently. Lord, the list goes on. But Lord, help us to know how much more we can accomplish and what we might be missing out on if we don't come together and if we're not willing to talk to one another and to sometimes maybe admit when we're wrong, that we've judged somebody incorrectly. Um, help us to give each other a chance. Um, help us to listen to one another, Lord. Help us to be loving and help us to, um, again, just work together and realize that we are one big team, that we are all different parts of the body of Christ and that you want us to recognize the image of you in one another, that we are special and we are loved and you love us, therefore we should love each other. Lord, we just pray for good sleep and help us to rest, help us to be safe until we meet again. And Lord, it's in your holy name we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. So, thank y'all this evening. I'm sorry Pooh Bear couldn't join me. I am at my parents' property in Pilot Mountain. So, like I said, I was on the go this evening, um, but still wanted to hop on and do the night-night story. And I will see y'all next week for another night-night story. I don't know what I'll read then, but again, if anybody has suggestions, um, please just message me and I'll be glad to consider them and try to get my hands on that story. Okay. Love y'all bunches and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.